This is gonna be great. You fly on in for a September 11 deal. What about some- Damn right I'm flying in for a September 11 deal. I'm flying in hot, baby. In fact, so hot with melting steel beams, but not passports. Those are fireproof, obviously. Beautiful. Serial to cope with the Boston Marathon bombing. These are the most <laughs> offensive ad campaigns ever. In 2011, Mexican restaurant- You could say that cereal was the bomb. Hacienda rented this specific billboard, on which they'd referenced the Jonestown Massacre, where cult leader Jim Jones had killed his entire following by spiking their Kool-Aid with poison. So what- Now to be fair, he also shot a lot of them because some did try to run away. What did the restaurant's billboard say? We're like a cult with better Kool-Aid, and their drinks were apparently to die for. Hacienda's- <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's pretty good that's that's a seven out of ten that's a seven out of ten vp of sales and marketing explained our role is not to be controversial or even edgy we want to be noticed and there's a difference we have a responsibility True. to advertise with care and that's why we're pulling this ad Hey, it's not like the, the people from Jonestown are gonna actually, like, make a fuss about it because they're dead. We made a mistake and don't want to have a negative image in the community, yet this wouldn't be their last controversial billboard. Five years later, in 2016, the restaurant made another reading... The best Mexican food this side of the wall. Which quickly went viral on Reddit, <laughs> sparking outrage. Of course it went on Reddit and sparked outrage because no one else cared. Really disappointed Hacienda continues to push past what is acceptable for advertising. It probably was also spot by some Democrat who, who's, who's like, who's probably saying, Oh no, my Mexican toilet cleaner is really unhappy about the stereotype. Think about the Mexican toilet cleaners. Oh, it's gold. It, it's gold when Democrats think of Mexicans only as toilet cleaners. You gotta love it. Not a fan of most of their billboards, but this is just too much. Hashtag take it down. Others showed their What a tweet. They didn't even include the fact that they're shaking. Support in comments such as this one. Yet unlike their previous billboard, Hacienda says it has no plans to apologize for or remove the ads. Their vice president explained We don't intend to upset anybody, but we do use humor. And Lee's discount liquor applied a similar strategy. Alcohol, it's cheaper than Oh boy, discount liquor. Than therapy. Bro. If alcohol is not the answer, change the question. You look like I need a drink, and perhaps so did the people who tried to get the billboards banned. <laughs> Take down billboards stating Lee's liquor is cheaper than therapy. The owners of Lee's- Oh, who was mad about that? Therapists? Don't they have already enough work? I mean, currently 50% of millennials need therapy for magical things that don't exist. Liquor has failed to remember the implications of alcohol regarding DUIs, broken families, and when people commit manslaughter. Lee's liquor owners think this is funny? Take this billboard down. Yeah. Various comments agree- I hope they did not. It's such as, this is irresponsible advertising. You can sell alcohol without crossing this boundary, whereas the humor was liked by others. Hey dude, get a life. It's a very funny sign. I wish we had more signs in Vegas like this. If you don't like the billboard, go back to Utah. Lee's Discount Liquor ran their own billboard controversy poll, which found that 77.2% of people called the ad clever and not offensive, yet this didn't stop a mandate to take the billboard down. Even worse was a business card share Seriously, in Vegas of all places, the place that really- that literally tries to trap people in gambling? Seriously. ...to Reddit reading, Are you an alcoholic? We can help. Although they weren't offering counseling, but rather an alcohol delivery service. Nice. In all seriousness, I assume it's just a bad translation. I meant, do you enjoy alcohol? We can help. But yeah, really should have run that by a native speaker first. In that very same year- Yeah, that's- that is a very twisted and autistic Reddit opinion right there. Oh boy. In that very same year, British supermarket Tesco found themselves in the infamous horse meat scandal where one of their burgers was found containing 29% horse meat. Well, only two days after the scandal broke, Te oh boy. Tesco tweeted, It's sleepy time, so we're off to hit the hay. See you at 8 a.m. for more Tesco tweets, and the replies weren't too pretty. You're hitting the hay? Well, I suppose oh the poor boy. horses don't need it anymore. Maybe hitting the hay wasn't the best choice of work. 
words right now. Plenty of room on the hay now that we've eaten all the horses. Tesco responded by tweeting, I'm terribly sorry. That tweet was scheduled before we knew of the current situation. We never intend to make light of it. And oh, Tesco is just a bunch of pussies. And in case this wasn't bad enough, Tesco then had to scrap a segment of its latest advert as it was due to include images of a horse. The horse was apparently said to be used in a humorous context, but while Tesco was simply a victim of bad timing, recipe website Epicurious was a victim of bad thinking. Because after the Boston Marathon bombing, they'd post two insane tweets. In honor of Boston and New England, may we suggest whole grain cranberry scones. Boston, our hearts are with you. Here's a bowl of breakfast energy we could all use to start today. The tweets were quickly shared to a media train- uh, Oh, that's, yeah, that's just stupid. That, that is just- that is just stupid, yeah. Any website which wrote, Get your legs blown off by a terrorist? Try these scones. Lose a cherished friend? Maybe this bowl of breakfast energy can help, which- But what if it does help? What if the scones are really good? I mean, you lost your legs. It's not like- It's not like you have a lot of options what to do. Trying some scones could be at least fun. Then turned into articles by Mashed and Business Insider, as Epicurious was labelled by the public, morons, idiots, dickheads, and pathetic. The company responded with a copy and paste- I mean, said a bunch of Americans who went in- uh, who start, have started multiple wars because of ma ma weapons of mass destruction that have never been found to this day. A little bit ironic, but you know, it's fine. Apology, leading to more criticism reading, a repeatedly tweeted template apology isn't genuine. It's a form letter. The steady- st Oh, which apology is genuine? Show me the last YouTuber who did something horrible and then apologized uh, thoroughly. No one. Stream of identical tweets does nothing to engage with the audience and express human remorse, but were Epicurious's tweets as bad as Kenneth Cole's? Millions are in uproar in Cairo. Rumor is they heard our new spring collection is now available online, although the uproar had actually come from protests in Egypt, where 800. Oh, when is Egypt not protesting? Like, come on. 46 people were killed. Kenneth Cole quickly apologized before making the same mistake only two years later. In response to the Syrian civil war hit tweet, boots on the ground or not, let's not forget about sandals, pumps and loafers, sneakily what are the loafers? advertising his new line of shoes. On a public billboard, Kenneth mocked the Hudson River crash landing, but at least he had the decency to avoid September 11, unlike this time. Hell no, baby, no one's avoiding that one. That's that's the comedy gold right there. TV commercial by the Worldwide Nature Fund. It be Dude, America goes to Vietnam. Everyone gets PTSD against a bunch of farmers who didn't even know what's happening, okay? Twin Towers happen. America once again gets PTSD. Can America do something and not get PTSD for once? In Europe, no, there's no such thing as a grandfather who complained about being in the VAR and killing whoever the hell they were supposed to kill at that time. Those are fun and cherished memories. Began by explaining in 2001, one of the worst tragedies in the history of humanity killed 2,819 people before showing a bunch of other planes to articulate that in 2005, the tsunami killed 280,000 people. That's a hundred times more deaths. The message of the ad was that our planet is brutally powerful, yet it felt like they were minimizing the severity of 9-11 to highlight a natural I mean, it is nothing compared to that one, though. Disaster that couldn't they have, have been point. avoided. Not only is the message offensive, but it's scientifically flawed. All the carbon reductions and recycling in the world won't prevent tsunamis. Advertising double fail. The commercial- Oh wait, they advert- Oh my bad, my bad. Horrible, horrible, horrible in that case. The commercial was so offensive, the WWF tried to claim it, did not authorize its production or publication, yet there was another 9-11 ad that was somehow even worse. It began to circulate in September 20. <laughs> this alone already makes it gold. Hell yeah, boy! 13 and showed a man flying toward two foot long subs, which you could buy for a price of $9.11. The ad was nice. captioned with two pieces of text Fly on in for September 11th, and you will never forget this deal. But was the ad actually legitimate? Well, no. It was the work of Damn satirical it. news site The Onion, which wrote from the structural steel. Satirical or profitable? Uh, pro 
profitable, not profitable, but prophetic at this point. Well, admittedly, the onion now has also gone vogue, so, you know, it is what it is. Still melt on Tower 7 Grain Bread to the Twin Chowers Cold Cut Combo with Ground Zero Car Vinaigrette on Let's Whole Wheat Roll. We've got something Ground Zero. for everybody this September 11. Despite clearly being a joke, a man named Travis tried to cash in on the deal, printing the ad to bring to his local... Trust me, Travis was not the only one. ...local Subway, which they unbelievably accepted. Is that a good coupon? I mean, there's a reason they work at Subway. Not, n not shaming Subway workers. You are still way smarter than McDonald's workers. But you know, still. I don't know. It's a good coupon. It's good. Okay. He and his friend were totally baffled. Dude, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> even showing their receipt to prove they hadn't lied. If the coupon itself wasn't hilarious enough, the fact that Subway accepted it as a legitimate coupon had me rolling on the floor. Subway, however, wasn't impressed. Like Subway should be impressed that their employees even know how to process coupons. Everyone, we are deeply offended by the fake story and ad created by The Onion. The story received coverage in a Sydney Morning Herald article, which highlighted another 9-11- Oh no, Sydney Morning Herald article. How will people- People sleep at night now. Deal that was instead completely genuine. The now closed Tumble Down Trails Golf Club in Wisconsin posted this newspaper ad reading 12th anniversary of 9-11. To commemorate this, we are offering nine holes with cart for only $9.11 per person, nice. or 18 holes with cart for only $19.11. The owner of the course said the golf club began the promotion two years ago on the 10th anniversary of the attacks, and until now it had been warmly received as a way to ensure people never forgot the tragedy. He'd therefore add, we're nice. a little hurt by the fact that people are putting such a negative context on this. I thought people would appreciate it. It seemed the owner at least had some good intentions, although so did these three companies when they used hashtags incredibly wrong. Sweets company Entenmann's wrote, who's not guilty about eating all the tasty treats they want without realizing- Oh no, yeah, these are good. Oh no, these are good. Realizing not guilty was trending, due to Casey Anthony's trial for the murder of her baby. Then respond by tweeting, sorry everyone, we weren't trying to reference the trial in our tweet. We should have checked the trending hashtag first. Fashion brand Celeb Boutique wrote, hashtag Aurora is trending. Clearly about our Kim K inspired Aurora dress. Although the arrogance of thinking you're anything related to beauty, clothing, or whatever you're ever gonna, ever gonna trend you bunch of clueless hacks. So this wasn't exactly true. The hashtag was trending due to the Batman movie theater shooting, which killed 12 people in Aurora, Colorado. Hey, hey, but what if he actually bought things from Celeb Boutique? Wouldn't that be a story? We are incredibly sorry for our tweet about Aurora. Our PR is not US based and had not checked the reason for the trend. At that time, our social media was totally unaware of the situation and simply thought it was another trending topic. They should have probably, oh, oh, sorry, didn't know this happened in Aurora, but if he was buying our brand, he could have probably done better because you do better when you look better. Big. We have removed the very insensitive tweet and will of course take more care in the future to look into what we say in our tweets. Then there was D. Giorno's Pizza who wrote, Hashtag Why I stayed. <laughs> Why I stayed. You had pizza. Oh boy. Through though. You had pizza, which was a hashtag started by women explaining why they stayed in abusive relationships. Unsurprisingly, the company then tweeted- I mean, it's it's the be it's a better explanation than the average one why I stayed. A million apologies. Did not read what the hashtag was- Because the average apology is like, he was a bad boy and I thought I can still change him was about before posting, and to their credit, they spent the entire day responding to every complaint authentically. All social media experts, please take a lesson from DG Auto Pizza. When you step in it, you give real apologies and not excuses. Good job. However, Home Depot never yeah, how about not? got the memo, as they do the exact opposite. After posting a tweet which produced the article, Home Depot apologizes for racist game day tweet, terminates agency responsible. I have no idea what this is even about, huh? So what did the tweet say? Huh. Which drummer is not like the others, attaching a photo that showed black people next to a monkey? 
Ah, uh, this guy because he's not drumming, clearly. You could argue it wasn't that bad given it said which drummer is not like the others, although it's hard to know what Nivea was thinking when headlining an ad with the words white is purity. The camp- Damn straight right facts, boy. Bane was so wild people didn't believe it was real, although others tried to argue that the world was overreacting. Is the US so obsessed with race now that the first thing America- Uh, yes, yes. Whenever you start the sentence as you, the US obsessed with race, the answer is- Always, without any exceptions, 100%, yes. If you can insert politics or race baiting, especially race baiting, and anything that anyone in the U.S. is talking about, you're gonna, you, people are going to respond positively to it because it's all the U.S. exists for nowadays. It's great. Americans think when they read white isn't the color but race. People stop seeing everything with identity politics tinted glasses. Then there was this ad by Big Pens reading, look like a girl, act like a lady, think like a man, work like a boss, which was hilarious. I'm confused. Wait, what? Well, what's the problem here? Seriously designed to celebrate Women's Day. People didn't appreciate it. If it's Why? quite alright with you, Bic, I'll- Wait, 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 wait. When I don't understand what's wrong with this, is there even anything wrong with this? Hilariously designed to celebrate Women's Day. People didn't appreciate it. If it's quite alright with you, Bic, I'll look like a woman, act like a woman, think like a woman, and work like a woman. And you can F right off like an idiot. To oh. Oh, it was just women be doing women. Okay, I got it. Make matters worse, Bic had launched the Bic for her pen range three years prior. Big for her. <laughs> That's good. They are, which had already been slammed as sexist. Oh, look at that. It's the woman that abuses everyone, and she's going to tell you what's bad and good. These are the people you get your advice from. Keep that in mind. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it. That was Sunny V2. Oh, yeah, because Sunny V1 sucked. This was Quizzer Sensei. Bye.